Ever since Project ENCODE has published their findings in 2012, they concluded that at least 80% of the DNA, these include pseudogenes, transposable genetic elements, repetitive DNA, was actually functional. Joseph Ecker was a spokesman for the INCO project and concluded that 80% of the genome contains elements linked to bio biochemical functions, dispatching the widely held scientific view that the human genome is mostly junk DNA. This remarkable finding excited some degree of scientists, creationists, and intelligent design advocates. At the same time, though, the project was put under fire by the scientific community because the paper highly offended the long-held evolutionary paradigm that mo most of the DNA is junk. This caused an emotional outrage within the scientific community, especially those that believe in junk DNA evolution. Other evolutionary advocates, including here on YouTube, were irritated when they saw creationist intelligence side advocates referring to the Project Inco paper. In defense of junk DNA, the Inco project was criticized for using what they call a loosely definition for the word functional. They argue that although 80% of the DNA may be in fact specifically active at the biochemical level, they actually don't serve a practical useful purpose in benefiting the organisms. In other words, while the non protein coding regions of the DNA are serving specific activity at the biochemical level, they are actually neutral or serve no practical purpose for the organism at all, which makes those 80% regions non-functional rather than functional. By contrast, the protein coding regions are actually functional because they play significant roles in the evolutionary development of species. 80% of the non-coding regions do not. Well, I'm about to tell you right now that this damage control nonsense excuse that the non-coding regions lack practical significance in the evolutionary development of species is actually nothing more but, I'm sorry, dramatic bullshit. It is not true that the non-coding regions are nurtured or useless despite its specific biochemical activity. I will provide many citations, so buckle up and enjoy the big evolution fairy tale of junk DNA. Pseudogenes are considered by evolutionary advocates as broken genes that do not code for proteins. According to the evolutionary theory, they neither harm nor benefit the organism because they remain neutral. Pseudogenes can originate from three known mechanisms, mutations, virgin transposition, and unsuccessful gene duplication. In the evolutionary point of view, they seem to be leftovers of many ge previous generations that were either once functional or duplicated. In one classification, a gene that lacks a promoter or introns are classified as process pseudogenes. The absence of introns and process pseudogenes indicate that they were reverse transcribed from messenger RNA back into DNA, a process called retrotransposition. The majority of pseudogenes fall into this category. These type of pseudogenes are considered neutral that don't call for proteins. In a 1998 study, for example, titled Characterization of an Intronless Human Commodian Like Pseudogene, the paper reports a CM like gene classified as HGH6 that encodes a CM like protein that contains 148 amino acids and is non homologous to other forms of CAM proteins. In the study, they tested the gene in human tissue and it was discovered that no mRNA was derived from HGH6. They also found the human ge uh, pseudogene to lack introns. So as a result, they concluded the gene as a process pseudogene, since it doesn't call for a protein. Interestingly though, in a 1992 paper titled Protein Product of a Human Intralized Chameleon Like Gene shows tissue-specific expression and reduced ab abundance, abundance in transformed cells. It was discovered that a human intralized CM-like process pseudogene actually had the ability to call for a protein. This protein was named NB-1 and it contained the same number of amino acids as the one from the previous study I just showed you. Despite the same number of amino acids and 85% amino acid similarity between the CAM like protein and the functional NB-1 protein, there were significant differences indicating no homology at all. So despite the lack of introns of the human process pseudogene, it was actually capable of encoding a protein. Contrary to the evolutionary view, the genes that either lack a promoter or introns is a process pseudogene that has no function at all. Another paper in Natural Selection and the Origin of JGW Process Functional Gene in Drosophila reported a retrotransposed one star pseudogene classified as Drosophila alcohol dehydronase or simply ADH. This one star pseudogene turns out to share very similar structural and sequence similarity with the unrelated novel gene. Now despite the sequence and structural similarity between ADH and JGW, they are different in terms of pattern expression, 
Now, regardless, the researchers discovered a functional role of ADH retin transposal gene that was once thought to be a pseudo gene. Another paper titled Is Esterase P encoded by a cryptic pseudogene in Drosophila? reports the esterase P otherwise abbreviated as ESTP as being most likely a cryptic pseudogene due to the fact that it contains three premature termination colons and remains shut off by a silencer rather than a stop colon. Notice also at the same time how the researchers in the paper incorrectly report that the previous of the so-called process pseudogenes ADHH as a broken gene that does not call for protein when in reality it actually does based on the previous study I showed. Going back to that cryptic ESTP pseudogene claim, in the study title, Characterization of the ESTP Protein in Drosophila and its conservation in Drosophilids, it turns out that the so-called x ray P gene actually encodes the protein ESTP7. In addition, the one-star cryptic pseudogene also seems to play an important role at the phenotype level of the species Drosophila and Sophorilla, however you pronounce that. Interestingly, this silent phenotype has, one, has also been conserved throughout the generations. Wow, a one star cryptic pseudogene that can actually play a significant role in the adapting this spe species. Imagine that. Now, in 1997, University of Michigan researchers in the paper, a fossilist mutates brain in so form, however you pronounce that, pseudogene is localized within the human mechanism disease gene, identified a human gene. The paper identified a gene known as PGAM1 as a possible process pseudogene. When they were unable to find any expression of the gene, they concluded that it was indeed a broken pseudogene. In 2002, however, biologists at the University of Chicago and University of Cincinnati, how you pronounce, whatever, how you pronounce that, in the paper titled Evolution of the Phosphorylated Mutase Process Gene in Human and Chimpanzee, found evidence that the same one star pseudogene that was inferred to be the case in previous paper actually encodes a functional protein. Now you may notice in the paper that the process gene is labeled as PGAM3 rather than PGAM1 as it was classified in the previous study. Don't be alarmed though. The name PGAM3 actually arose as soon as PGAM1 that was once thought to be a process pseudogene to be functional. The paper describes the same functional gene that was labeled as pseudo in the previous paper. Another study that reveals another pseudogene playing a functional role in protein is a process pseudogene codes for a new antigen recognized by CD8 plus 1 T cell clone on melanoma. The paper describes the creation of a gene calling for a melanoma antigen from a pseudogene. So far, we learned that there is some degree of the so-called junk pseudogenes that actually play a significant role in the development of species. Not only do they play a role in benefiting the organism, but also play a role in the adaptation of species, as we saw with the cryptic gene that was once thought to be a broken when in reality it was actually being conserved by natural selection. Now just to be clear, only some proportion of those pseudogenes have been shown to encode proteins. Critics of the 80% project encode have argued that although transcription and non-coding regions still play specific activities at the biochemical level, they aren't functional in the sense that they provide benefit for the organism. On the contrary though, there is actually growing evidence that RNA transcribed for pseudogenes perform essential functions in the cell. Well then, Welcome to the world where a pseudogene and its corresponding functional gene transcribe both of their sense strand and sense strand DNA nucleotides into RNAs, binds those two RNAs together, and result into the amazing creation of the double stranded RNA molecule that plays an important role in regulating proteins and gene expression for benefiting the species. So, let's get started and debunk the junk DNA bullshit. A paper written by Japanese researchers titled non nurture Evolution of the Transcribed Pseudogene Macorin 1-P1 in Mice knocked out a pseudogene in mice called Macorin 1-P1, which is also in correspondence to its functional protein coded gene Macorin. To their surprise, the Macorin gene that encoded the enzymes was actually degraded and less effective as soon as they knocked out the pseudogene non-protein coding sequence of Macorin 1-P1. Such finding was considered surprisingly since it did not fit with the evolutionary review that pseudogenes are neutral and that their purpose today is meaningless. This group of Japanese researchers, on the other hand, found it to be quite the contrary and importantly functional, not just at the transcription level, but also for the fitness of the mice. So, as a result, they titled the article non neutral Evolution to indicate the importance of the so-called pseudogene that junk DNA nature is being 
nagging about that it really isn't functional, although biochemical activity is present. Pretty funny how this cold, non-protein coding regions aren't practically functional. False fails hard on his face when faced with the facts. In the 2007 European paper, target mimicry provides a new mechanism for regulation of microRNA activity. A group of European biologists reported that expression of a plant pseudogene, IPS1, increased the expression of a protein coding PHO2 gene involved in phosphorus metabolism. They found that the pseudogene produced RNA that provided an alternative target for a molecule that would normally have repressed translation of the messenger RNA from the protein coding gene and they coined the term target mimicry to describe the process. This is another example of how a non-coding RNA transcription in the cell plays an important and now useless role in the expression of protein coding genes. In the 1990s, biologists in England reported in the paper, neuronal expression of neutral nitric oxide synthase protein from an NOS pseudogene reported that the expression of a gene in the central nervous system of snails was substantially suppressed by antisense transcripts from the corresponding NOS pseudogene. The NOS pseudogene RNAs form duplex molecules with the messenger RNAs from the gene itself, leading the biologists to suggest that transcribed pseudogenes are a potential source of a new class of regulatory gene in the nervous system. In 2008, a team of biologists in the article, The Human ABC Transported Pseudogene Family, Evidence for Transcription and Gene Pseudogene Interference, revealed an analysis of a total of 22 human ABC transporter pseudogenes. 45% per- of these pseudogenes lack introns, along with repetitive sequences, yet they were reported to be actively transcribed in suppressing the expression of a protein coding gene involved in transporting molecules across membranes, and they found that the expression of the functional gene was reduced as well. In other words, the normal expression of the protein coding gene depended somehow on transcription of the pseudogene. Five out of these 10 pseudogenes were actually processed pseudogenes. The team concluded that this provided evidence for a regulatory interdependence of a transcribed pseudogene and its protein coding counterpart in the human genome, though they did not know the exact mechanism. In the 2010 paper, a coding independent function of gene and pseudogene mRNAs regulate tumor biology. American biologists reported that the expression of two human protein coding genes is increased by transcription of the related pseudogenes. They trace the effect to pseudogene-derived RNA transcript that serve as perfect decoys for molecules that will otherwise repress the protein genes, and they conclude that pseudogenes have an intrinsic biological activity in regulating gene expression. A 2008 article in Nature, Pseudogene-Derived Small Interfering RNAs Regulate Gene Expression in Mouse, reported endogenous small interfering RNAs produced from pseudogenes regulating the protein coding gene expression in mouse eggs by RNA interference in which double-stranded RNA suppress specific transcripts in a sequence-dependent manner. The authors of the article concluded that their findings indicate a function for pseudogenes and regulated gene expression by means of the RNA interference pathway. Another criticism that evolution is used in defense of junk DNA is that duplicated pseudogenes from failed gene duplication are non-functional and must be neutral. However, this is to some degree false. In 2009, biologists reported in the paper, small RNAs originated from pseudogenes a subset of duplicated pseudogenes that not only form small interfering RNA, but also play a role in the specific developmental stages and physiological, physiological conditions of rice, and suggested that these small interfering RNAs possibly had important roles in regulating gene expression. Well, it turns out that there are different types of pseudogenes that do not just potentially go for proteins, but there are other types that also play an important role in the protein coding gene expression for benefiting the coded protein enzyme as well as playing an important role in the embryo and developmental stages of the living organism. Now let's move on to another aspect of pseudogenes, sequence conservation. Evolutionary theory in favor of junk DNA asserts that non-functional DNA will accumulate damaging mutations over time. By contrast, similar conserved sequences in the non-protein coding regions DNA over evolutionary distant organisms imply that such DNA is functional. This same logic has been applied to the evolutionary reasoning of pseudogenes as well. However, there is evidence that many of the pseudogenes across distant, non closely related species from various evolutionary branches are actually extremely conserved rather than the majority of them having significant nucleotide variation caused by random mutations despite their unknown purpose of what those functions might be. In 2000, 
Three, two researchers in the paper Pseudogene, are they junk or functional uh, DNA, reveal sequence data from humans, mice, chickens, and fruit flies such as Dressel Villa, and reported their expectation that pseudogene features that will be unexpected if pseudogenes were non-functional sequences of genome DNA. On the contrary, though, they found that those pseudogenes are uh, often extremely conserved, implying that they are subjected to natural selection and somehow not free to accumulate random mutations. These two researchers regarded this, along with widespread transcription, as evidence that many of the pseudogenes across th these species must be functional despite their own purpose. In 2009, Canadian biologists from their paper, accessing, assessing the genomic evidence for conserved transcribed pseudogenes under selection, compared pseudogenes in humans, monkeys, mice, rats, dogs, and cows, and found significant sequence similarity, implying that the pseudogenes have been conserved by natural selection as well. They concluded that through evolutionary analysis, we have identified candidate sequences for functionally human transcribed pseudogenes and the potential of concerned functional pseudogenes across multiple mammalian species. Huh. How odd. Well. According to the logic of Kenneth Miller, Richard Dawkins, Michael Shermer, Jerry Coyne, and John Avis, they argued that pseudogenes confirm neo darwinian evolution because they are non-functional. On the other hand, if we assume that pseudogenes is true to junk DNA and then compare the DNA of unrelated organisms, Sequence similarities imply that many of the pseudogenes are functional. Ironically, non-function implies neo-Darwinism, but at the same time, plus sequence conservation implies function. When it comes to conserved pseudogenes, it seems that the poor evolutionists fall off the very branch in which they sit on. Now, in my next video, we will turn to one of the most commonly cited sources of evidence for the so-called junk DNA, repetitive DNA. Thanks for watching.